In this video, we'll discuss a popular concept of sharing parameters across different parts of the network, and we'll also discuss a related technique of tying parameters of two networks to take similar values to each other and thereby regularize both of them. We will discuss parameter sharing again in a lot more detail later on in the course when we'll talk about convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural networks, but we already mentioned this concept here because it allows us to restrict the capacity of our network in useful ways that help us make the most out of our limited data and to avoid overfitting. So let's dive right in. Parameter sharing and parameter tying. One big reason to use parameter sharing across different parts of our neural network is that if we can do so, then we implicitly have more data for training these parameters because different parts of the neural network can help in training these parameters. One example for this is in convolutional neural networks, where we share the parameters um, of filters across the entire input image, so across different spatial dimensions. Um, without this parameter sharing in a convolutional neural network, we would have to learn feature detectors for each input patch separately. And with parameter sharing, we can just use one um, filter, one, one of these feature detectors, and use it for every input patch. And that gives us invariance to translations, and it also gives us, well, just more data for learning these filters because every input patch actually gives us information for these filters and for the weights in these filters. Another example is in recurrent neural networks where we actually apply the same network at each time step. So there we have parameter sharing across time, whereas for convolutional neural networks, we had parameter sharing across spatial dimensions. Another reason for using parameter sharing is to control the capacity of a network, and in particular to control it and nudge it towards actually encouraging search for regular patterns in the data. And this introduces the prior knowledge that we're actually interested in these regular patterns. Last but not least, parameter sharing also limits the memory cost of our neural networks, because even if we use a particular weight thousands of times in the neural network, we only have to save it once. So in particular, if we save the model to disk, we only need to save one copy of this, and, and we know implicitly where to use this in the network. One example of parameter sharing is in multitask learning, where we have one neural network that actually tackles multiple different tasks at once. So on the right here, we have an example where we have an intermediate level shared representation, H super shared here. And then we have individual model heads, H1, H2, H3, for three different tasks. And then we can use examples from the different tasks. So let's say we have examples from task one and from task two, then we can use these with, um, well, with, with backprop to actually train the weights along this path with samples for task one and um, along this path for samples of task two. And notice that both of these actually can be used to train this shared representation, H shared. And then when you actually want to work on a third task, then you already can use the shared representation as an input to the shared task. And maybe um, for the th um, third task, you only have um, very few data points, then um, you can already start from a strong shared representation. And this has a similar effect as actually having additional data if the tasks are related. A variant of parameter sharing is where you don't actually share the same parameters, but where you actually just encourage weights to be similar to each other. So for example, you can train a neural network to be similar 
to another neural network. And for example, if you have two different tasks on, um, or, or the same task on a different input distribution, and you want to, or you expect that the networks should actually be quite similar also in their weights, then you can actually add a soft constraint. So here, a soft constraint, not a hard constraint, um, not that they have the same weights, but that they have similar weights. So that they, um, yeah, that, that's why it's a soft constraint. Um, so if we have a, a model A with parameters theta A and a model B with parameters theta B, we have model predictions of model A as y hat of A and model predictions of this model B, then we can actually say if these tasks are similar enough, then we can try to tie their weights together to, for example, through L2 um, regularization to say that each of the individual weights, um, so weight one of network A should be similar to weight one of network B. And well, quantify that actually through an L2 penalty and add that with a particular strength or optimization of network A or of network B or of both of the um, both of their weights in order to well basically exploit that we have additional data from a related task and we can use that to regularize each of the individual tasks and um, get better generalization that way. All right, that brings us to the end of this video. And as always, I'd like to leave you with some questions. So I encourage you to pause the video here and think about them before moving on. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.